Black Widow and her terrible adopted parents, comics and movies. She was only armed with a pair of wrist-mounted shockers and the ability to jump on people's shoulders and flip them over. But that didn't stop her from becoming a favorite Avenger. The Black Widow, Natasha Romanov, or Romanova, earned her Avenger status by having a certain set of skills that makes her a nightmare for people who want to invade and or destroy the Earth. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. That's not what those skills were meant for, though. Natasha was taught those skills in the service of the Red Room. How she got into the Red Room is a little muddy, but for the comics, all paths lead to Ivan Bezikov. The man who adopted Natasha after having her literally tossed to him during a fire. Bezikov supported Romanov as a KGB agent and a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent because he loved her in a not fatherly way. And yet, not the weirdest version. In the MCU, she was traded to the Red Room and raised by General Drakov and later assigned to a fake family with the Red Guardian as her pretend father. If this seems complicated, just wait. Gamora and Thanos. It's not just Gamora's birth parents that are dead. Her entire species no longer exists. How that came to be varies based on the live action or comic book version. For the MCU, the mad titan Thanos came a call into Gamora's homeworld with his ill-conceived let's kill half of everyone plan and adopted her. In the comics, her people were killed by zealots who worshipped an evil version of Adam Warlock named Magus. Either way, it left a mark and she became one of the most deadly people in a universe full of deadly people. In the MCU, Gamora was sacrificed as the thing Thanos truly loved. But in the comics, she gets hers by killing Thanos and filling out her own Infinity Gauntlet, which she uses to fold the galaxy. She got over it, though, and rejoined the good guys. Shang-Chi and Mandarin slash Fu Manchu slash Sheng Tzu. The game of Who's Your Daddy gets a little complicated for Marvel's Master of Kung Fu. Shang-Chi entered the Marvel Universe when it held the license for Sax Romer's sinister pulp villain Fu Manchu. Eventually, that license lapsed, and Fu Manchu's problematic legacy meant that Shang-Chi's parentage went in another direction, this time in the form of Sheng Tzu. It turns out that Fu Manchu was just the alias of Zheng Zhu, the last of a group of powerful sorcerers who had formed a society to protect China. But when Zhu's brother sacrificed himself to restore Zhu, Zhu returned the favor by slowly turning their society into a global criminal organization who even tried their hand at the whole conquering the world thing. The world is mine! The world is mine! Zhu had hoped that his son would follow in his footsteps, training him in the martial arts and general killing. But it's hard to get kids excited about the family business, and during his first assignment, he decided his dad was a global-scale jerk and worked with MI6 to stop him. Double O Boot to the Head. That's not his code name, but it should have been. For Shang Chi's entry into the MCU, fatherhood is passed to the Mandarin, traditionally an Iron Man foe who wields the Ten Rings of Power and leads an organization called, of course, the Ten Rings. That organization is as old as the MCU. They're the ones who captured Tony and tried to get him to make a bomb in a cave. Bruce Banner and his dad, Brian. Generally speaking, Bruce Banner is a mild-mannered guy, so long as you don't get him angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. Whether it's the Bruce Banner that got his angrier half by protecting young Rick Jones, or if he was self-experimenting to replicate the Super Soldier Serum, Bruce had all of his rage focused in one giant green smashing machine known as the Everlovin' Hulk. But what does Bruce have to be so mad about? Mostly his abusive father Brian. The Banner family goes all in on alliteration. Brian Banner was also a research on gamma radiation, but during his research, he got a glimpse at the Marvel Universe's biggest eldritch horror, the one below all. A being that sits at the bottom of the multiverse, hoping to consume it all until they're the only one left. This, along with Brian's abusive father, also named Bruce, convinced Brian that the Banners had a monster gene. He took it out on his unplanned son, who eventually blacked out, killing him at his mother's grave, because Brian had killed her. That makes him a terrible human being. But villainy comes when he eventually finds himself in the realm of the one below all, who started using Brian as his earthly vessel, taking over Gamma figures, including combining Devil Hulk and Guilt Hulk. There's a lot of Hulks. Vision, built by Ultron. Vision is another one of those characters whose backstory has gone through more than a few retcons or revisions and, being a synthesoid, straight up reboots. Regardless of the specifics, one thing remains. Vision is the product of Ultron. In the MCU, Ultron was trying to build himself the perfect vessel with which to destroy the Avengers and people, because he spent five minutes on the internet and went, well, that's about enough of that. Who knew cat videos could be so radicalizing? The comic book Ultron had a more devious plan of creating Vision to infiltrate the Avengers and destroy them from within. But just like Hawkeye, Black Widow, and Wonder Man, once your double agent becomes a part of the Avengers, they tend to like it and want to stick around and immediately throw your evil plan out the window. Star-Lord and Jason slash Ego. Whether it's the Star-Lord of the comics or from the MCU, there are a few things that are constant. Peter loves his mother and has a complicated and adversary relationship with his father. In the MCU, Peter found out that he was the offspring of Ego the Living Planet who identified himself as a Celestial, one of the oldest beings in the universe. Their role in the MCU is set to expand when their biggest creation, the Eternals, hits screens. And maybe we'll find out that Ego was full of it. I mean, his name is Ego. Comic Book Quill gets a different father, this time Jason. 
Jason was the leader of the Spartax Empire, who during a layover on Earth fell in love with Meredith Quill and fathered Peter before going back to war. Jason's attempts to get Peter to join him were a little too murdery for the Spartax, so he went on to build his own criminal empire as Mr. Knife. Polaris, daughter of Magneto, who also thought he was the father of Wanda and Pietro. Magneto is one of the most powerful mutants in the world, and has used that power to either carve out an existence for mutants free of humans, or, at times, work towards his old friend Charles Xavier's dream of living in harmony with humans. With all of that going on, he's lost track of a child or two. Up until recently, he was pretty convinced, along with the twins, that he was the father of Wanda and Pietro Maximov. Their origins are turning out to be more complicated. More than they already were, that is. Previously, the wizard thought that he was the daddy. Magneto does have another child, though, this time for sure, who's inherited her dad's metal-manipulating ways, but not his conquering goals. Quake and Mr. Hyde. You'd think tinkering with your DNA to try and unlock a more powerful or aggressive version of yourself would be something people would avoid in the Marvel Universe. But then, there are a lot of hulks. Brilliant but jerky scientist Calvin Zabo was a superfan of the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, going beyond cosplay and straight up inventing the Hyde formula that turned him into a Hulk-like creature minus the gamma radiation. During his dalliances, he fathered an unplanned child with a woman who didn't know she was an Inhuman. The result was the Inhuman Daisy Johnson, better known as Quake. Rather than following her father's footsteps, she took an offer from Nick Fury and joined S.H.I.E.L.D., which, as unpredictable as S.H.I.E.L.D. is, is probably more stable than Calvin Zabo. Nightcrawler and his parents Mystique and Azazel. There are some onomatopoeias for things in the Marvel Universe that immediately bring a specific person to mind. Snicked means someone's about to find out the not nice thing that Wolverine is best at. And BAMF means that the X-Men's nicest and yet most conflicted member just teleported into or out of the room. Kurt Wagner, the Nightcrawler, is one of the mutants that can't pass for human because of his devilish imp-like appearance, which he got from his parents. Those would be the shape-shifting Mystique and the also teleporting and demonic-looking Azazel. The family resemblance makes Nightcrawler a member of the Neafem, a group of demonic-looking mutants that were banished to the Brimstone Dimension by the angelic-appearing Chaorafem. The Runaways versus their parents, the Pride. Sometimes heroes find out their parents are really villains after having already adopted that superhero life. Some adopt that superhero life after finding out their parents are villains, or a group of villains. The Runaways are the children of a secret cabal, the Pride. The Pride's deal is that they sacrifice souls to the alien Gaborim in exchange for power and influence, with the added bonus that half of the dozen members would be spared when Gaborim took over the Earth. Tough luck for the other six. Finding out that their parents were sacrificing people to eventually destroy the planet didn't sit well with the young group, so they found a buried mansion and set about undoing their parents' nefarious scheme. 